stream. I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live. The Prime Minister of Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, has met today only moments ago with the president of Russia, President Vladimir Putin. He also, in one of the photos that we saw there, uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov was also in one of the meetings there, meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu. And what's interesting is that the both the Kremlin and as well as the Prime Minister's office uh, placed the opening comments between the two. President Putin wishing, wishing Prime Minister Netanyahu a very uh, happy uh, holiday for the upcoming uh, event of uh, Purim, which is the holiday that uh, celebrates uh, the, the time of Esther, being on the eve of that. And as well, they included the remarks uh, that they both were working together and frequently they've been working together uh, regarding that of terrorist, terrorism in the Middle East there, that they are both working together to fight this type of terrorist activities there. Now, the interesting thing is though, and we do not see any response from President Putin on this, is that uh, President, or excuse me, Prime Minister Netanyahu does go in, and of course he speaks about radical Islam. Uh, he also names directly in his opening remarks to President, uh, or yes, President Vladimir Putin, about Iran, uh, the successor, uh, successor of the ancient Persia, and how that they are ready to destroy the state of Israel. Uh, but again, no, no mentioning of counter remarks by President Putin. Those of you that may know President Putin generally does not say uh, Islamic terrorism, but he generally just speaks of terrorism in general, such as ISIS, etc. He just does not put a religious twist on that. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that he has so many, uh, such a large Arabic population within his own borders. Uh, one reason why uh, analysts have said that he does not use such terminology. Another thing that I thought was interesting I'd share with you real quick here, the Russian insider has brought out that 8,000 documents detailed CIA crimes, but U.S. media won't touch them. Uh, they brought out in their own article here with the latest WikiLeak uh, troves there, and as much as Western media loves to gossip about uh, all the, the different uh, hacking and things like that that goes on inside the United States, uh, speaking about blaming Russia for things like that, uh, the latest uh, release that WikiLeaks calls Vault 7 will make up the biggest intelligence publication in history. Uh, but it says that Western media is not even touching it. Giving you a little list of examples of things that are coming out in this, uh, they listed here in the Russian Insider, CIA has espionage division more powerful than NSA with no checks and balances. CIA secrets hacking division produced a huge, uh, about a weaponized welfare to inf uh, infest iPhone, Android phones, and lost control of it. Uh, the CIA loses control of entire cyber weapons arsenal due to negligence. The Obama CIA built most powerful cyber attack arsenal costing U.S. Taxpayer, taxpayers 100 plus billion, lost it due to negligence. CIA, CIA illicitly hoarded zero day attacks, putting businesses and government at risk. Obama administration used their advanced cyber attack arsenal against private citizens. Uh, the CIA can turn smart TV, iPhones, gaming consoles, and many other electronic devices into open mics. And by the way, anything that you have, whether it be your smartphone, your television, that has voice command, the CIA has access to that. Something we've known for quite some time ourselves there, that they can listen in to you right there from your own smart TV. And that's been going on for a number of years now already, about eight years if I'm uh, correct in saying that thus far. Anyway, the CIA can turn all internet-enabled uh, consumer electronic devices into listening devices. The CIA has a backdoor to every PC running Microsoft. Skype voice conversations are converted into text and stored in the CIA spy cloud. That was something I was told recently, that that's where uh, the cloud is actually ran by the government. Uh, CIA has backdoor access to basically anything produced by Microsoft, Apple, Cisco, and Google and they can remotely control cars, planes, hospital devices, and useful techniques for assassinations. Malware is used by a spy on journalists, discovered sources of leaks. U.S. consultant Frankfurt is a covert CIA hacking center. Um, 
So CIA uses Russian malware, leaves fake fingerprints to misdirect attribution of cyber attacks. That was another one that I saw earlier today. We just have not had a chance to report on that as of yet. Uh, but it's just amazing how much things are going on as a courtesy of the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency of America. Uh, but anyway, it is a very extensive uh, uh, information that was brought out by WikiLeaks. I can only imagine this is really going to put Julian Assange in a most pre uh, precarious uh, circumstance now with the leak of, uh, of this information here. No doubt the U.S. government is not going to take lightly all the documentation that's been leaked about the CIA. But then again, it does bring back to uh, remembrance here, especially the Obama administration accusing Russia of hacking this and hacking that hacking the elections, getting involved in the election. And at the same time, President Barack Hussein Obama has sent a delegation to Israel to try to topple Prime Minister Netanyahu for making another term in office. Speaking about hacking, the Obama administration was king of hacking, especially in the latest leaks from the CIA through WikiLeaks, finding out more and more. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live, and surely they will be hacking this as well. Speaking of hacking, by the way, too, if you're making comments on Israeli News Live and find the comment never seems to make it up, we're finding the same issue as well. In fact, we're finding out that when we have so many comments to approve that we find out probably 25% of those comments, we cannot even find them to be able to even approve or disapprove. So somebody's playing around with the comments. Now they're trying to suppress the information that we're sharing with you here on Israeli News Live. So anything you can do to help share the information we share with you <clears throat> to get it out to more people would be all the better because believe me, somebody doesn't want you to know the things that we're trying to tell you now. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. What is today? March the 8th, I believe it is, or March 9th, actually. I think it is March 9th, 2017. Shalom.